Okay guys, welcome to a new Be Built by Broser. We're here in Southern California in January, outside in shorts and a t-shirt. We know that a lot of other you guys around the country are suffering from serious snowstorms and sub-zero temperatures. We sympathize. And we sympathize for you. And Well, I empathize a little bit because, you know, I used to live in New York. So I remember what that was like, but um, I put that out of my mind a long time ago since I left <laughs> and made the smartest move of my life and moved out west. But anyway, getting to the show, we're here at Gold's Gym, Venice. We're going to continue our series on unilateral training. We're going to cover four shoulder exercises using one side at a time. Uh, and also we're going to show you a bicep exercise that I actually did the other day. I was training with Dave. We were training together doing arms. And I showed him this bicep exercise. He's like, oh, we got to put this on the show. It was great. Yeah. So we're going to throw that into the show. And then, of course, we have Ask Merlin. And uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy the show. And uh, we uh, want you to watch and uh, ask us questions. And no, I don't know what I'm saying now. I'm just going on and just talking. <laughs> because it's such a nice day out here. There you so, go. There you go. Good we're show. milking it. Right. <laughs> okay, guys. So here is a movement that we do sometimes one arm at a time on a seated side lateral machine for the lateral delts and we're doing it slightly differently than normal today as you can see his legs and his feet are on one side of the pad on the opposite side of the working arm and what this does is it actually creates a little bit stronger of a contraction at the top so what we're emphasizing is the side delt and we're emphasizing the range of motion right at the top and getting a very very strong contraction of course with the goal being building more roundness more cannonball side delts this is definitely not a movement you want to go too heavy on you want to get a nice squeeze at the top and make sure your body remains in this position throughout the set give it a shot okay so now we're doing a unilateral press on a seated shoulder press machine now the interesting thing about this machine is you can see the way the weight, the way the bar moves up at an angle. So what we're doing is we're getting his anterior shoulder right in front of the machine, right in front of where he's pressing. And we're using this grip on the inner portion here to focus more on the anterior deltoid rather than putting it on the outside like a normal press, which will also engage the side deltoid. You can see how his legs are like this so he's angling his body this time so he's pressing in line with the machine and he's really really getting a strong contraction on that interior front shoulder rounding it out up front give that a shot okay here's another great unilateral movement for the side delts the lateral delts helping to round out the side delt give it that cannonball look he's laying sideways on an incline bench set to about 45 degrees as you can see he's bringing the dumbbell down by the hip but he's not letting the weight ever touch at the side to make sure to keep the tension constant as he raises to the top he's raising in line with the shoulder and this puts a lot of emphasis on the range of motion right at the bottom as opposed to the last machine which did it towards the top this makes a great superset with that side lateral machine and it's great for the side shoulders give it a shot there's a great unilateral movement for the rear delt which a lot of people have trouble developing we're doing it here on a seated chest press that uses cables and as you can see he's got his hand where his palm is flat to the floor and he's just grabbing the end of the cable and he's squeezing back with the rear delt you can also do this movement by grabbing the handle. So now his palm is actually in a hammer grip. He's also just squeezing back, but you can actually feel a slightly different action in the rear delt by doing it either way. So choose one of these ways of doing it and do it from workout to workout or maybe set to set. This is a terrific movement for developing the rear part of the shoulder especially for competitors who need to have that back double bicep give it a shot okay so as promised we wanted to show you this interesting bicep exercise which really gives you a tremendous contraction 
at the top. So if you're really looking to get that real big squeeze and really feel that tight contraction to the top, this movement will do it. So as you can see, we have the bench set up at uh, maybe just above 45 degrees, even though it says 45, it looks maybe about 50 or so. He's starting with his arms out straight in front of him. He's not letting him hang straight down by his sides. He's letting him come out in front, almost as if he was on a preacher bench. Straightening the arms and just flexing at the elbows. The elbows are barely moving. He's just coming up and squeezing. He's focusing very hard on the contraction. He's not letting his wrists bend. And as you can see, a tremendous squeeze at the top. This will work not only the biceps, but also the brachialis, which lies underneath the bicep. Great way to finish off a bicep workout. Give this one a shot. Hi, right, Merlin. You got some uh, some good questions this week, or? Yep, good questions. Um, first, I want to answer something real quick from a longtime client of mine. Her name is Kathy Cullen. Oh yeah. And uh, she wanted to know about cardio equipment. Is is there any uh, piece of cardio equipment that's like superior the, to the others for burning body fat? Uh, you know, first thing I want to say is the first thing about cardio is is you know it really has a lot to do with. Um, the amount of time you put into it and, and or the amount of effort. What I mean bet between those two things is that um, you know if you're doing a steady state type cardio where you're doing a lesser intensity um, and that's the type of cardio you prefer uh, then just make sure that you're being progressive every single week by adding time uh, to the session. So if you started off with 30 minutes the first week uh, and then you plateau and went your weight loss or your fat loss bump it up to 35 minutes, bump it up to 40 minutes, and, and slowly bump it up like that. Uh, when I'm talking about intensity, that's for people who like to do high intensity interval training. Uh, and instead of increasing the time, you'll want to increase the amount of intensity that you're using so that during the, uh, the periods of cardio where you're going at the most intense level, uh, you know, usually a hit cardio regimen will be something like two minutes of like a medium pace, and then 30 to 60 seconds of an all out pace, whatever machine that you're using. Uh, and so you would want to bump up the intensity during those those periods of time. Uh, as far as cardio machines go, I think it's always superior uh, to carry your own body weight. And what I mean by that is that, you know, while there's nothing wrong with doing, you know, a stationary cycle or something like that, uh, it's superior to do a, like a treadmill where you're actually, you're supporting your own body weight. Uh, to take a step up from that, um, where you're actually lifting your own body weight on something like a step mill, uh, so that not only you're supporting your own body weight, but you actually have to lift it up on each on each type of progressive step. So I think that the step mill probably is the most intense, the most difficult, the most challenging of all cardio, and probably burns the most calories uh, in terms of indoor cardio. Then of course there's running and there's hiking, there's things like that, but that's a different animal. So if we're talking a piece of equipment in the gym, uh, I think the most intense would be uh, would be a step mill. Uh, I think treadmill uh, walking on, a, on an incline is very good because again you have to lift your body weight uh, but again there's nothing wrong with mixing that in with things like the elliptical, the bicycle. Uh, I think that getting a variety of cardio is, is good as well but number one, step mill for sure. Alright, all right, Biggie, what else you got? So it's interesting because one of the most popular products in the category of supplements over the last few years has been you know pump type products. You know. Uh, products that will help you that are vasodilators and help you get a better blood flow to the muscle uh, All max just came out with a new product called uh, Impact pump and I have been getting a ton of questions about it uh, You know not only about the product itself, but people asking and I think it's a really great query uh, To ask you know is the muscle pump something that you know just feels great to have you're in the gym You know you get pumped up and it just feels great. And it looks great, and then it goes away um, or is there actually any valid evidence or is there anything that says that a pump will actually help increase growth? Uh, and I also want to tie this into another supplement that's been out there for a hundred years now, it seems like, creatine. But first let me just say, um, when it comes to getting a pump, yes. Getting a pump actually is something that is important for muscle growth. And that's pretty much a two-fold thing. First of all, whenever you're getting a better blood flow to the muscle, you're gonna be getting more nutrients, you're gonna be getting more oxygen, you're gonna be getting um, more hormones, uh, all delivered to muscles and muscle cells. And obviously having more of these things delivered 
uh, is going to be, you know, food for the muscle cells, if you want to say, uh, food and energy uh, for growth. So absolutely getting the greater delivery of these things to the muscles is going to help you grow. Another very, very important point about a pump is that when you get a muscle pump and the cell itself gets swollen with fluid and it gets drawn into the cell, it actually acts as an anabolic signal. So in other words, the way the body works is, is that when the muscle cell gets stretched, it actually triggers the body to turn on the anabolic process or the growth process. So if you get a good pump and the cells are very swollen, um, you will be directly affecting muscle growth. So yes, it's very, very important to get a pump. Now, creatine, um, you know, kind of ties into this in a way uh, in that creatine um, will help you to actually draw water into muscle cells even at times where you're not working out. It just does that on its own. So that's a reason why, one of the reasons why creatine helps you grow has to be, has to do with this swollen muscle cell. Of course, creatine also helps to increase ATP so that you're having better strength gains in the gym and lifting more weight for more reps. Uh, it can actually help to reduce myostatin, which is a, a hormone that we secrete, which actually prevents muscle growth. And if you decrease that myostatin levels, you will have uh, greater potential for growth. Uh, and it also has been shown to increase IGF-1, which is a very, very powerful uh, anabolic hormone. So creatine works on many levels. This is why I think that using a pump product uh, and creatine together actually is synergistic. Uh, they work very, very well together and will help to increase, increase uh, growth uh, way more so than just one product or the other. But yes, the pump actually is very, very important for muscle growth. But if you had to choose, let's say between the two, which one would you choose personally? Or which one do you think is most effective? I think, I, honestly, I mean, if I really had to bring it down to one, I think creatine actually is the best okay. natural supplement on the planet just because it, it works through a myriad of pathways okay. for muscle growth and has a lot of health health benefits as well that we're still discovering. And you're still going to get a pump by going into the gym, right. obviously. Uh, so, you know, just as long as your diet is high, high enough in carbohydrates and you have glycogen and you're training properly with focus, you're going to get a muscle pump anyway. These pump products actually just enhance the pump so ideally both but if not creatine ideally both and, and a lot of them actually a lot of the pump products do actually have right. creatine in them uh, some companies have separated them which is fine you could just put take them yeah. together uh, but um, again the main point to take home here is that the muscle pump can directly affect muscle growth in a positive way it's not just a cosmetic thing or something that's temporary so yes you should be chasing the pump during your workouts now it doesn't mean you should necessarily be doing sets of 50 reps just to get a pump because we do need to break down muscle tissue yeah. as well. But we're still just looking for optimal blood flow to get uh, the effects of the pump. Awesome. Thanks, Biggie.